the Buddha divides his breath meditation instructions into four sets or four topics. The steps focusing on the breath, the steps focusing on feelings, the steps focusing on the mind, and those focusing on dhammas, or mental qualities. In the steps focusing on the mind, you start out by being sensitive to the state of your mind right now. The Thai Johns talk about this a lot. At the beginning of the meditation, you have to make a survey of your mind. What shape is it in? What does it need to be brought into balance? And the Buddha recommends in his second step that you gladden the mind. In other words, you make it happy to be here. There are lots of ways you can do this. You can do it by the way you breathe. Think of breathing as a whole body process. And that each time you breathe in, you're being bathed by good energy. And think of the breath all around you. It's not just a line coming down from the nose into the abdomen, but there's breath energy behind you, breath energy to the left and the right, above and below. And any parts of the body that seem to be tense or tight right now, think of them dissolving into the breath. Your experience of the body is made out of what the Buddha calls four dhatu which can be translated as elements or potentials, properties. There's the solidity, there's the liquidity, which is cool, the warmth, the fire, and then there's the energy that flows, and that's the breath. And of those four, your first experience of the body is of the breath. Now you may have the perception that you're first aware of the solid parts of the body, and you're trying to get the breath to come into the solid parts. But switch it around. Think of the breath being there first. And there's really nothing to obscure it, nothing to obstruct it. Try to find a way of breathing that feels really good. That's one way to gladden the mind. It's engaged in what the Buddha calls bodily fabrication, which is the breath, and also creating feelings of ease, which is part of mental fabrication. The other part of mental fabrication is your perception. What images are you holding in mind right now? Images about the breath, images about the meditation, images about yourself. Which ones are conducive to settling down? And then there's finally what the Buddha calls verbal fabrication. That's how you talk to yourself. Because sometimes the breath doesn't seem to be going so well. But you can talk to yourself in a way that's encouraging. The Buddha himself, when he gave Dharma talks, the verbs that they use in the Pali Canon to say that he gave a Dharma talk was they, he would instruct, urge, rouse, and encourage. Four verbs, one of them only, is instruct, giving information. And the rest is to give what they call, in Thai they call kamlang chai, strength to the mind power to the mind. So see if your mind needs some empowering. And learn to talk in ways that empower it. And I, you actually believe, all too often, especially in the modern world, we tend to believe the cynical voices in our minds, the ones that are discouraging, the ones that say, see, this is not working, you're not getting anywhere. And those are not helpful at all. And it's not that they're true. They have power because they serve the interests of some of your greed, aversion, and delusion. They serve your laziness. In other words, they serve your defilements. And they can be insist that they're true, but they're not helpful. Think of the Buddha's instructions on how to speak. He says to speak things that are, that are true and beneficial and timely. So first you've got to convince yourself it is true that you can get the mind to settle down. Remind yourself what the Buddha said. If human beings couldn't develop skillful qualities or abandon unskillful ones, he wouldn't have taught. Other human beings can do this. You're a human being. You can do it too. Think in those terms. That's true and beneficial. 
in terms of timely, you have to figure out what does a mind need right now. Sometimes it needs to be scolded a little bit to get in line. Other times it needs to be encouraged. So learn how to be skillful in your mental chatter. All too often you just let whatever comes into the mind go through the mind and dominate the conversation. But you want to learn how to be strategic in how you talk to yourself. After all, you are trying to master a skill. It's going to take time. It's going to be a while sometimes before the results really become riveting, really become absorbing. So in the meantime, you learn how to talk to yourself, to give yourself energy, to give yourself encouragement. You're here harming no one. You're having an opportunity to look at your mind. These are all good things, even before the concentration comes. So learn how to gladden the mind. It's when the mind is gladdened that it's going to settle down. Some people meditate saying, I hope the meditation will make me happy. We have to learn how to encourage yourself to be happy as you're beginning. And it's simply that you'll have more and more basis for happiness, more and more reason to be happy as the meditation progresses. But it starts out by lifting the mind, uplifting the mind. So it lift it up above its normal conversations and bring it up to the fact that you're here in the present moment, watching the breath, the same breath that the Buddha was watching on the night of his awakening. Simply the matter is now how to get here and stay here. And learn how to appreciate what you've got, even when the concentration is not all that strong and not going all that well. You may have a little bit of meditation, a little bit of mindfulness, a little bit of concentration. Protect that. Think of cupping it in your hands. It's like a small fire that you're getting started, and the wind keeps blowing it out, so you've got to protect it. It doesn't seem like much. But after all, where do huge forest fires come from? They come from little tiny sparks. You've got a little spark here. You're not trying to burn down the forest here, but at least you're trying to get something to catch in the mind. And so it does begin to catch. Protect it. Don't look down on it. When I was first studying with a John Furong, I'd be sitting with a group of people, and this person would be having that vision, and that person would be having this vision. I kept wondering, when am I going to get the visions? And I began to assume that my concentration was no good because I wasn't getting visions like other people. But then I began to realize that my mind was going in a different direction from theirs. And I've learned how to protect the concentration that I had, then it could develop. And in John Lee's image, it's like you have a plot of land, and there are potentials in the land. There's soil in the land, and it can grow things. But at the moment, it's all weeds. So what do you do? Well, you clear away the weeds. And so for a while, you're not getting any crops. But still, the fact that you're hacking away, hacking away, hacking away. You get a little bit of corner here, a little bit of corner there, and you learn how to plant that and plant this. And bit by bit, the fields grow. But they grow only when you protect them. So when you plant seeds, don't expect them to be huge plants right away. They're going to be small for a while, but that's precisely when they need to be protected. And as they get bigger and bigger, they take on a strength of their own. So in the beginning, learn how to talk to yourself in a way that's encouraging. Learn how to appreciate whatever stillness you can find. And as you protect it, it'll begin to take root and grow. 
and reward you for your efforts.